Well, this close the game to We Bear Bears Month by tomorrow, and then after that, we have Summer Palooza 3, but today, just before July, the My Little Pony official YouTube channel has uploaded, though not with really a trailer, but a minute video regarding the cast voicing the characters in the Generation 5 movie, and the fact that we actually get a title called My Little Pony A New Generation. Not really the best title, but at the same time, My Little Pony doesn't really need to be the best when it comes to coming up with titles. I'm just saying, the, they do come up with great titles, episode titles from Generation 4 episodes, but with this, they're starting off with Scratch. So, with that being said, this is where we can act, this is where we actually get to see bits and pieces of the film, and also... The voice actors being voiced by these characters. I have to be perfectly real. I really will recognize one of these characters, and it's Chris. Is, is, is his name Chris? No, it's James Nelson. Nelson, if I did pronounce his last name right. This is the same person who played Tom in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie last year, and it is actually kind of bizarre to actually see him being in this movie when he's completely voicing a pony character. Then again, he was in other anim animal movies before Sonic the Hedgehog, so I actually think that this is mostly interesting to actually see how he's going to be portrayed in this film. Granted, when it comes to the information of this show, getting a show in the following year in autumn and not this year, it is going to be a really difficult to actually see a different cast Nemo take take James's place because I know James isn't really that cheap. He really isn't. Getting towards the other characters, Izzy Kashi is voice is is voicing Zip. And I gotta admit that, considering that her voice actor is completely different than Rainbow Dash's voice actor, and the fact that Zip is gonna be a lot more brave and a lot more serious compared to Rainbow Dash, it is actually kind of interesting to actually see how she will portray in this film when it comes to Zip's development with the other characters. And let me just say this right now, that I actually think that Zip is gonna be a Probably one of my most exp one of my most high expected characters I want to experience from this movie, mainly for how she's gonna be portrayed. And before I continue on, I need to talk about the animation. I know it's mostly weird considering that the this movie is all in CGI, but this CGI animation and with this taking place so many years after Generation 4, I can easily tell that they'll probably want to take some take some steps forward and want to make Equestria a lot more like the real world when it comes to how we usually usually co usually cooperate with technology. I'm saying this because considering that there was this bit well where we see Twilight's lab in in the season one episode and the fact that it was never been used again, I'm pretty sure that they probably didn't use this idea again because it didn't work out with the lore of the Generation 4 universe. I have to admit that considering of how much that the technology in this in My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is really off-putting and the fact that we actually get to see the places not being like the world of Generation 4, I have to admit that they'll probably want to do this change for either the battle. And every time I can really look at the buildings in this, regardless of how limited that we see the animation backgrounds, it really doesn't even feel like My Little Pony Generation 4 anymore. And it really shows that apparently life can improve or anything can improve as time goes on in 
the universe words. Mainly My Little Pony, well, there's no technology that much aside from Twilight's Lab. And the fact that every time I instantly look at moments involving these characters going to different places and the fact that they're mostly like the places from Generation 4, I think that they'll probably want to make most of the backgrounds mostly hidden for a surprise once this movie premieres in September 24th. Because considering that it takes place years after Acrestia, it could either take place in this town, which I'm pretty sure it won't, or outside of Acrestia, because regardless of how huge this map is, there was still a lot going on in the world of My Little Pony regardless. So, what's happening outside is basically what's happening in this movie. Is mostly my prediction of what they're trying to do in order to make this world building of a new generation walk out. And to get this out of the way, since that we got some posters and screenshots of new characters... Involving, involving Queen Haven, which, by the looks of it, she could be the villain. Or this person who could be the villain, I don't know. I don't remember the names. It's going to be a lot more difficult to actually find these characters. A lot more interesting once they completely appear on screen for the first time in this, next, in this Netflix movie. I need to be perfectly clear. I wasn't expecting a lot from these cast of characters voicing these cartoon characters in this movie, but every time I completely look at people like Zames Narson, who is the same person from the Sonic movie, and other people that I haven't met, it really proves to me that Hasbro wants to take a different approach because this is the second time while they have a cast that could redeem themselves in order to improve on the fan base of My Little Pony. I'm saying this because compared to the voice actors from Generation 4, regardless of how limited they were, mainly the movie characters along with other characters, I have to admit that these characters being voiced by these actors are mostly... Probably, nah, I mean, not to say that they're bad, but at the same time, I actually think that they could do something interesting in the, into the table, but at the same time, I know for a while that not all these voice actors are going to be coming back for the TV show that's going to be premiering next year, mainly the fact that they're mostly expensive, and it's mostly the fact that most characters in TV shows based off of movies, they didn't have we're calling cast memos because we all know that they're way too expensive. Granted, I could be wrong on that, but considering that the original cast had the same voice actors from the beginning and end, and including the Krusty Goers, I really don't know what they're going to do with the new generation of these voice actors because I know full well that half of these will stay in production for Generation Five's TV show, but at the same time, I really don't think that they're all going to be coming back. I'm just saying this, because since that this is going to be much more different compared to the introduction of Friendship is Magic, well, it doesn't start off with a show and it's on for the movie, it's going to be a lot more unexpected for how they're going to take this route. So, yeah... I am going to be reviewing this movie, and I have expectations of what the actors are going to be doing in this movie. And granted, we didn't get a trailer of it, they're probably saving it for either next month or in August. Keep this in mind, this is being released in Netflix and not in theaters. Considering that the pandemic is still slowly disappearing thanks to the vaccines, and even if... It's going to be mostly de depressing that My Little Pony won't be able to head to theaters like the first movie did in 2017. I still think that watching this movie in 
on Netflix is probably a much more fun alternative compared to watching it on on uh, Discovery Family than anything. Because let's be real, we mostly forgot Discovery Family after Friendship's Magic came to an came to an end. No offense for anyone who likes the other shows, I'm just saying. So anyway, I'm only fan by free here, and tomorrow, We Bear Bears Month officially begins.